Keith Bilbrey went scrounging around for some questions from you, so let's tackle some of the news issues that are on your mind. We've dug these out of the My Two Cents at TVN.TV mailbox. Keith, reach your hand down in that dirty little box of yours. <laughs> See what you found. What you got? Well, we've got some jewels. Now, first of all, Dave in Leesburg, Florida writes, billionaire Kanye West announced that this week he's planning to run for president. West supports prayer in schools, opposition to abortion and capital punishment, as well as calling for prayer and repentance that leads to racial healing. While his presentation was unusual, many of the moral issues he's supporting is in keeping with Christian values. Now, if he registers to run, which party will his candidacy affect come November? Well, that's hard to say. Here's what we learned this week. Kim Kardashian, who is his wife, uh, has said that he is going through a manic phase of his bipolar uh, personality, which, which he really does have. So my thought was he probably won't run once he finds out all of the just really tricky little things you have to disclose in being a candidate for president and all of the limitations on the income that he can get you see, I've been there a couple of times, so I could have given him that advice. But it remains to be seen whether he will really run. I will say this. I honestly have great respect for Kanye, and I have heard his testimony of his uh, Christian faith. It's powerful and uh, very, very authentic. And, and so whatever we may say of him, I'm grateful that he's reaching some people with the gospel that otherwise would never listen to me or listen to a pastor. They're listening to Kanye. And I say, God bless him and keep it going, Conway. I'd rather you do that than maybe run for president. All right, who else have we heard from? All right, well, Tammy in Nebraska writes, President Trump, Governor DeSantis, and Florida and other conservatives are seeking to return children to school beginning in August. With coronavirus numbers skyrocketing, is this even wise? Well, I'll say this, their parents certainly think so. They can't wait to get the little buggers back in school. Look, I, I think that at some point, we have to begin to live life again in this country. We gotta be safe, you know, wear the mask, socially distance, you know, elbow bump instead of shake hands and hug. I get all of that and I'll do it. But I'm gonna tell you, I'm not doing it because the government is telling me I gotta do it. I'm doing it because I wanna be careful for my health, health of my family, and those are the uh, the health of the people around me. So here's my uh, concern about school. If you don't get kids back in school, they're gonna get further and further behind academically because many of the parents simply aren't prepared. Uh, th they're not ready to try to teach their children indefinitely from home. They may not have the, the proper materials. And there's something else being lost, and that is the socialization of some of these children, their lack of being able to even talk to and be with their friends. Are there risks? Yeah, there sure are. There are risks crossing the street to get to school. And there are also risks from staying home. I want everybody to be safe. And I hope we get back to school. And I hope that the most important thing, we find a vaccine pretty soon. And they are all going to be safe from this stuff. In the meantime, be careful, but live. For heaven's sakes, let's live. All right, Keith, what else have we heard? All right, well, for Michael, St. Charles, Illinois, I was disappointed to hear you say People who tear down statues hate America. Our country is reverting back to the 60s and 70s when those who wanted America changed were vilified. Keep your eye on the ball. The conservative cause is right. Don't be on the wrong side of history again. Well, Michael, I'm not sure what side of history you think I'm on. I'm on the side that believes that the truth and the facts of what history was about really matter. And I don't think we learned the facts and the truth of history if we tear down every last semblance of it. Now, there are some statues that wouldn't bother me if we got rid of, uh, but here would be my absolute fundamental thing I would suggest. Take the statue down by the same process that it went up. So if it went up because a city council or a county government uh, decided to build it and place it, then petition that county or city government and tell them to take it down. Let your elected representatives make that decision. But don't do it as a mob, because if the mob can tear down a statue, how long will it be before a mob can tear down your house? How long will it be before a mob can take your car away from you? How long will it be before a mob can burn down your school? Mobs don't do things very well. That's why we organized ourselves 
with a government. I hope we don't forget that. And I'm frankly thinking, Michael, that's the right side of history. I'm sorry if you don't feel that way. Keith, who else have we heard from? Well, from Bloomfield, New Jersey, Joseph writes, Mr. Huckabee, we already have a place honoring America's greatest heroes. It's not a park or a garden. It's Arlington National Cemetery. Wow, what a powerful assessment. I, all I can say to that is amen. And I hope we never forget the extraordinary sacrifices of all those who bought our freedom. And we owe it to them. We owe it to them to keep our freedom and to pass it on to the next generation. All right, Keith. Well, Jonah, on Gmail, you sound like a real Trump apologist. Then going on to talk about the Bible and acceptance of all in the next sentence. You're a disgrace and God sees you and your lying ways. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Keith, are you sure that's not for my wife? Are you <laughs> sure about that? I just hey. read them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, wh what do I say to that? Thank you so much for your honest and sincere letter. Keep them coming. I'm hurt so deeply by it. I may have to take half a baby aspirin just to sleep tonight, but I'm gonna be okay. <laughs> All right, Keith. Well, Alan in Yucaipa, California, I hope I got that pronunciation right. We appreciate your show greatly. Lived in the Bay Area for many years. Many there are liberals or leftists. Nasty group of people. As a Vietnam vet, 173rd Airborne, I know how vicious humans can be. When I got home December 1969, I maintained that our next war would be with China. Looks as if I may be right. Makes me sad. I feel very bad for the current crop of vets. The ones in charge politically are those who spat on me when I got back. Thanks for all you present and represent. No, sir, let me say thank you. You and your fellow military members, men and women across the ages, you're the ones that deserve our thanks. And I'm sorry that when you came back, you didn't get the hero's welcome that you earned and deserved. I hope through the years that we have started learning a little bit more about the sacrifices that our Vietnam veterans made. And I hope we'll be grateful and appreciative of all of our veterans and never forget their service and their sacrifice and that of their families. Now, if you're seeing this, I know you've enjoyed that video. I mean, how could you not after all? So you know what you should do? Leave a like, click on the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell next to it so you'll always know when I have another video up for you to enjoy.